Aki is an ugly loner who leaves his house to get rid of his twink features and become a true man. However, all the determination comes crashing down when he notices the hot caretaker of his dormitory and falls in love with her. Now, Aki lives with three other girls and tries out new things to riz them up. Aki arrives in Tokyo for the first time and is trying to search for the location where his dormitory is located. After asking for directions from the drink shop owner Yatsuo, he makes his way to the dormitory. After a while of strolling here and there, he finally reaches the dormitory but no one arrives when he opens the front door. Aki steps inside and suddenly a hand blocks his vision in a playful manner. Apparently, it is Ayaka, the caretaker of the dormitory. She introduces herself but Aki is lost in thought and too busy staring at her talents to hold a conversation. Seeing how Aki is drenched due to the rain outside, Ayaka advises him to take a bath before he gets sick. While he is contemplating the pretty girl he just saw and having all sorts of other thoughts about living together, Ayaka decides to join him. As she thinks that Aki is a girl, she wants to be the one to rub his back as according to her it's their family tradition. He tries his best not to get out of the bath but when she forces him to do so, Aki makes up his mind and both the angel and devil agree to reveal the truth of him being a boy. Just as he turns to tell Ayaka the truth, he makes eye contact with her talents which leaves him no choice but to keep it to himself and enjoy the moment. She tries to motivate him by saying that every girl grows at her own pace and there is no need to worry even if someone calls her flatboard. Finally, Aki decides to tell her the truth and she apologizes for the misunderstanding. However, it still doesn't bother her and she goes closer to Aki and says that he still is a child and she will take care of him. The close interaction in the bathroom is enough for Aki to pass out just to wake up in Ayaka's lap. Afterward, she informs him about everything that happened in the bathroom and how she dressed him when Aki was passed out. This makes him realize that Ayaka must have seen everything. Luckily, she realizes the Riz things he is thinking about and motivates him by saying that his size is more than enough for his age. Later, he starts keeping an eye on Ayaka and notices that she takes care of the whole house, including cleaning the room and cooking food. The only issue is the fact that she doesn't treat Aki as a man which bothers him as his questionable dreams would never come true this way. Aki finally has enough and asks Ayaka to stop treating him like a child and this reminds him of how back at home his sister used to treat him as a girl even though he hated it. The only reason Aki decided to move to Tokyo was so he could get a fresh manly start in life. Eventually, he makes up his mind to help Ayaka in any way possible which might make him more of a man in her eyes. Later, Aki notices her hanging her clothes and tries to help but accidentally touches her underworld making the whole scene awkward. She tells him to take care of the sheets but he ends up getting covered by them as he is too busy glaring at her talents. Afterward, he continues to fail as Aki can't even water the flowers and falls to the ground when asked to mop the floor. Seeing his unusual behavior makes Ayaka curious and she asks him about it. He informs her about his past and how he wants to be treated like a man. Ayaka likes his determination and agrees to treat him like a man if Aki is able to kiss her on the cheeks. He agrees and just as he is about to kiss her, the main door opens and the other dormitory residents arrive. They apologize for Ayaka's behavior and tell him that she behaves like this with every new member and that people like him are the ideal targets. Aki's mind can't process that whatever happened was not because the hot girl fell for him but because she is naturally this friendly. Surprisingly, the other residents are from his school as well and they start introducing themselves one by one. Up first is the student council president Yuzu. The vice president is Sumire while the secretary is Yuri. Afterward, Aki also introduces himself and the girls get excited to tame the only boy at the dormitory but Ayaka intervenes and says that it is her job to take care of Aki. After the introduction, Aki notices the little chick on Yuzu's head and questions about it but she dodges the question. Luckily, Sumire informs him that Yuzu is insecure about her height and wears it to appear a little taller. Afterward, the girls go to take a bath together while Aki returns back to his room. The next morning, Ayaka lays on top of Aki when he refuses to wake up on time. Later, the girls are about to leave early as they need to take care of some student council stuff and advise Aki to be on time as well. Subsequently, Ayaka notices that Aki looks nervous due to his first day of school and decides to help him practice by wearing a school uniform. The two of them start training but it doesn't help Aki in the least as the only thing he obtains from this session is Riz thoughts. After returning from school, he informs Ayaka that he was able to properly introduce himself and everything went well. Ayaka seems glad after hearing about it and gives him a hug. A month has passed since the day Aki arrived at the dormitory. One day, Aki is studying in his room when suddenly Ayaka arrives while wearing a cheerleader costume. He starts to ask the reason behind it. 
However, the other girls arrive and answer the questions, telling him that the school will be having a sports day next week and Ayaka will be one of the cheerleaders of their school. Turns out, Yuri wanted Sumire to be a cheerleader as well but she refused. This statement made weird ideas pop up in Aki's mind but he quickly removed them after noticing Sumire's glaring eyes. Afterward, Yuzu further informs them that Aki and Ayaka will be participating in the three-legged race, and the two of them will be training from now on. Later, the training finally commences and the first step is to stretch their bodies. After warming up, they move towards practicing the actual race and instantly Aki notices the difference in height between them. The chemistry between them seems to be on point and they both keep on running until the sun goes down. After they are done, Ayaka informs him that the next training session will start tomorrow. After the training, Aki goes to take a bath and out of nowhere Ayaka decides to join him as well. She notices that Aki's hair has grown a lot and offers to cut it as it would be cheaper than going to a barber. Surprisingly, the haircut she gave him was better than he expected. After the haircut, Ayaka gives him a hair wash and scrubs his hair with shampoo. Turns out Ayaka is quite talented with bubble art and makes a ton of shapes on Aki's head. Afterward, he sits in the bathtub while Ayaka takes a shower. At this point, keeping his little guy under control is getting harder and Aki decides to close his eyes to calm himself down. However, something unexpected happens as Ayaka joins him in the bathtub. According to Ayaka the more time they spend together will be better as their chemistry will improve by staying close to each other. From that day onward, they both train hard every day and finally it was sports day but all the excessive training caught up and he passed out. A few days later, Yuzu screams from the washroom and Aki runs towards her. After he steps inside the washroom, Yuzu realizes that she is completely commando and forces the cultured guy to leave. After getting fully dressed, she informs Aki that there is a spider in the washroom and asks him to take care of it. However, the chicken boy is scared of it as well and refuses. Yuzu informs him that she is especially scared of insects and Aki decides to test this theory. He points out a twitchy insect even though there is nothing, but it still scares the crap out of Yuzu. After he receives the well-deserved beating, the spider comes in front of Yuzu which makes her freak out. She runs out of the washroom and asks Sumire for help. She gathers up the courage and steps into the washroom, making up her mind to teach a lesson to the insect that dares to scare Yuzu. Suddenly, the spider falls on her face which results in Sumire passing out cold. The only one left is Ayaka as according to Yuri they shouldn't hurt the harmless bugs. Unexpectedly, Ayaka arrives and the spider, after making a well-calculated move falls on her talents. The brave caretaker easily throws the spider away without making a fuss. Later, it is Aki's first time going out with Ayaka. He can't seem to decide what to wear and asks the girls for help but they end up discussing the things Ayaka might be scared. This makes Yuzu give Aki the mission to find Ayaka's weakness. While they are out shopping, Aki notices a lot of people staring at them and thinks that they look like a couple when in reality, the people think of them as a cute mother and daughter pair. The first shop they visit is Yatsuho's shop and after strolling around the market for a little longer, they head back home while holding each other's hands. After reaching home, he realizes that he forgot to find out Ayaka's fear. Yuzu lends him a horror movie and orders him to watch it with Ayaka to find her fears. She agrees and the two of them start watching the movie. However, the only one scared is the loser Aki and Ayaka tries to calm him down. Seeing how this plan didn't work, Yuzu tells him to go and reveal his good-for-nothing body to Ayaka as it might be enough to scare her. Nevertheless, he refuses and having no other option left, Aki decides to go and ask Ayaka directly. He is hesitant at the start but eventually goes to ask her about it. Ayaka realized that it was the reason he asked her to watch the horror movie as well. She finally reveals that what scares her the most is if someone breaks into her room while she is asleep. The weirdo keeps it in his mind and sneaks into her room at 2 a.m. Ayaka notices his presence and forces him to lay in bed with her and informs him that she was scared even when they were watching the movie but managed to hold it in. She holds him responsible and punishes him by making him sleep next to her. The next morning, the girls notice both of them sleeping together while holding hands. Yuzu is hanging out in Aki's room and asks him about the age gap between lovers he is okay with. He dismisses the questions and asks Yuzu the reason she is in his room. She informs him that her room is on the first floor which is very hot due to summer and as Aki's room is on the ground floor it is much better. Afterward, Aki starts to study but it keeps on getting harder because of the girl lying behind him. Aki kept on staring at her and eventually Yuzu noticed. However, she thinks that Aki is curious about the manga she is reading and invites him to read with her. As sitting next to each other is harder for Yuzu, she decides to sit between Aki's legs and read the manga. Having no other way out, Aki is forced to read the manga as well and realizes that Yuzu likes shoujo manga but she seems to be stuck on a page for a while. On the other side, Yuzu notices that the position they are sitting in is similar to the one shown in the manga. Aki pushes his luck and tries to get closer to her but she freaks out and runs away. Afterward, Ayaka brings some cookies for Aki and asks him about Yuzu. 
After finding out everything, she wants to recreate the way he was sitting with Yuzu as well. However, this time Aki is the one sitting in front and reading the manga. Soon, Yuzu realizes that she left her manga and goes to retrieve it and finds the caretaker giving Aki the time of his life. The next day, Aki is walking back home and notices someone following him. It is none other than Sumire as she wants to record his daily activities and find out why Yuzu always talks about him and what is so special about him. Aki gives her the idea to ask Yuzu directly instead of investigating him but she refuses, saying that the shorty is a busy person and she doesn't want to nag her. Later, Sumire follows him to his room as well and starts staring at him from behind. Aki starts getting bothered by the eyes behind him and can't get anything done. Sumire notices his awkward behavior and realizes that he has been making a lot of mistakes in his homework which prompts her to help the loser out. She starts teaching him and figures out that she is going off track and needs to get back to investigation. Afterward, Sumire decides to take a look in his closet where she finds a cute stuffed toy. Surprisingly, she is fond of stuffed toys and Aki informs her that he likes them too even though it is a little embarrassing for him. Sumire couldn't agree more with him and got fired up. Ayaka opens the door simultaneously and decides to leave after witnessing a weird situation. Luckily, Sumire clears up the misunderstanding and tells Ayaka that the two of them were just exposing their secrets to each other, making Ayaka even more suspicious. After Ayaka leaves, Sumire finally understands why Yuzu has taken a liking to him and apologizes for causing all the trouble. Before stepping out, Sumire advises him to hide all the magazines he has stashed in the closet. A few days later, the three of them peek into Sumire's room and notice her lying on the bed looking all depressed. Giri and Yuzu inform Aki that Sumire took them to an amusement park earlier where Yuzu couldn't take a ride due to her small height. This made Sumire think that she somehow hurt Yuzu's feelings and has been sad ever since. The two of them ask Aki to enter her room and improve her mood but he hesitates to enter a girl's room on his own. To solve this problem, they transform Aki into a girl and force him to enter her room. He finally steps into her room and notices all the cute things lying around. Aki tells her that he is willing to help in any way possible and she requests to help her get changed. After helping her get dressed, Sumire tells Aki that she isn't able to carry Yuzu on her shoulders today and it has been very hard for her. Surprisingly, Aki volunteers to take the spot of Yuzu and climb on Sumire's shoulders like a creep. Having him on her shoulders recharges all her energy and turns her back to normal. Sumire steps out of the room and apologizes for making everyone worried. Meanwhile, Yuzu comments that it has been weird not being able to sit on her shoulders as well. He further informed everyone that the new strategy is to have a hen instead of a chick for her head. Unfortunately, the employee still refuses to let her ride the roller coaster. Back at home, Yuri asks Aki for help and tells him that it is something only he can do. This makes Aki think that it must be a manly job and instantly agrees. They go to her room and he gets ready to do the hard work, just for Yuri to take out a maid costume. She tells Aki that he is the only one who can wear them as the costumes she makes are either too big for Yuzu or too small for Sumire. He agrees and wears the maid costume but little does he know that there are a ton of costumes for him to go through. He wears them one by one while Yuri takes his photos. The last one is a swimsuit but he refuses and starts running for his life which makes Ayaka suspicious and she comes to check if everything is okay. Not wanting Ayaka to see him in this kind of dress. He hides in the closet along with Yuri. After Ayaka leaves, Aki realizes how close he is with Yuri and gets out of the closet instantly. Meanwhile, the photo frame in her room is finally complete when Yuri puts Aki's picture there as well. Yuzu asks Aki if he has ever heard of something called a June Bride but Ayaka informs them that if someone marries in the month of June, they remain blessed their whole life. Aki starts to have delusions about Ayaka as a wife and ends up spilling his juice. Hearing this makes Yuri and Sumire curious and they share the type of wife they want to be. Yuri tells them that she wants to be someone who takes care of her husband and makes him dependent. Yuzu then tells Sumire that she will be the type who is serious and strict in the office while all lovey-dovey at home. On the other hand, Ayaka would love a relationship where both parties help and support each other. However, she is not looking to marry right now. They skip Aki's turn as no one cares about what the loser thinks. Afterward, Aki is in his room and the thought of marrying Ayaka is still lingering around in his mind. While going through the June Bride magazine, he notices that the men who can cook are liked by everyone. This makes him motivated and he asks Ayaka to teach him how to cook. However, all he helps her is with preparation and the food is finally ready. Ayaka tells everyone that Aki is the one who helped her with dinner. Hearing this statement blows Yuzu away as she thinks the loser might be a better wife than she is. After dinner, Aki is heading to his room but notices Yuzu following him. She finally asks if boys like girls with bigger or smaller talents. Instead of answering the question, Aki praises her talents and tells her that she is as cute as she is. However, this comment backfires and Aki gets rewarded with a kick. Yuzu further informs him that he is the only one she can ask as discussing this topic with the other girl is very embarrassing for her. 
Afterward, the two of them go to Yuzu's room and Aki is surprised to see a computer in her room. Later, she makes him sit on the chair and research the ways to make her grow as it is embarrassing for her to do it on her own. The first result he gets is about a massage where the girl can massage the area and grow their talents even more. Aki realizes it's better not to look back as Yuzu is already testing this technique. Afterward, he finds another method but is too shy to read it out loud. Yuzu starts reading it instead and gets embarrassed midway. The only other way Aki can think of is seeking help from Ayaka as she is at the top among all the girls. However, he keeps staring at her which makes her uncomfortable and asks the reason he is acting so creepy. Afterward, she gives him a hug which makes him think that her talents are so good because of her warmth and kindness. He takes this idea to Yuzu and tells her that she needs to have a bigger and kind heart in order to gain a better appeal. Yuzu can't handle his idiotic advice and throws him out of the room. Afterward, Ayaka shows Yuzu her childhood swimsuit which is the same size as hers. This gives Yuzu the hope that maybe she would have an elegant body similar to Ayaka. However, little does she know that this swimsuit is from the time when Ayaka was an elementary schooler. The next day, Aki notices Ayaka going on the roof and decides to follow her. She informs him that they need to cover up the roof with plastic as it will start raining soon. After they are done, Ayaka realizes that the ladder fell on the ground and they have no other choice but to wait for the girls who are not currently home. They both sit next to each other and suddenly it starts raining and they end up taking shelter under a plastic sheet. The weirdo starts having freaky delusions about living with Ayaka on the rooftop his whole life. Not paying enough attention makes him slip but luckily Ayaka saves him and puts the two of them in an awkward position. The girls arrive back home and help them get down from the rooftop. The next day, they all come home from the rain and decide to take a bath. However, Yuzu reaches the washroom first and tells Aki that she will be the one to use it first. The two of them start fighting and the other girls arrive as well and they decide to choose the turns via rock paper scissors. Yuzu wins the game in the end which allows all the girls to take a bath simultaneously. Meanwhile, Aki waits for his turn and Ayaka helps him dry his hair. On the other hand, Sumire takes a look at Yuzu and realizes that her talents grew two whole millimeters, making Yuzu glad that her hard work is finally paying off. The three of them realize that it has been so long since they took a bath together and discuss that the next time will be on the school field trip. The only problem with it is that they will have to leave Aki with Ayaka alone and Yuzu is sure that the cultured guy won't miss an opportunity, as Aki has been sitting drenched for a while. Ayaka checks his temperature by touching their foreheads and tells him to lie on her lap. She tells Aki that Yuri is the only one who still hasn't laid on her lap. Later, Yuzu arrives and tells him to use the bathroom as they are done with it while the other two restrain Yuri and force her to lie on Ayaka's lap. Yuzu and Aki set up a portable swimming pool in their garden and are waiting for it to be filled with water. Afterward, Yuzu lies down in the pool while Aki stares at her from the sideline. Later, Sumire arrives and shows Aki her swimsuit which makes Yuzu realize that his reaction after seeing her swimsuit was not this good. At the same time, Yuri also arrives and tells Yuzu that she had to buy a new swimsuit as the previous one got smaller. Yuzu is jealous as she has been buying the same size since birth. Aki keeps on staring at the girls and Yuzu warns him that he is not allowed to step in it. Afterward, Ayaka calls for Aki and he almost loses himself after seeing her in a swimsuit. She asks him to wear his swimsuit as well but Aki is embarrassed to show his Excalibur and refuses. Afterward, both Ayaka and Aki look at the girls while they play as he doesn't have the courage to step in. Later, the girls are done with playing in the pool and Ayaka forces Aki to take a dip. Afterward, Aki notices Yuri taking pictures of something and seems curious about it. She shows him the pictures she has taken and among them is a picture of Yuzu while she's changing. He was not supposed to see it but luckily, Sumire arrives and his punishment gets delayed. Yuri shows Sumire all the Yuzu pictures she got on her camera and asks for money to show the better ones. However, Sumire who is short on money doesn't have any other choice but to retreat for now. Later, Yuri shows Aki the trick she uses to take Yuzu's pictures. First of all, she puts a manga on her doorstep and then hides on the staircase. After some time, Yuzu opens her door and makes a very rare face after looking at the manga, which is the moment Yuri takes the pictures. Similarly, Yuri wants to take some pictures of Ayaka as well but doesn't know her weakness. To overcome this obstacle, she asks Aki to take the pictures instead. Having no idea how to take good pictures, he goes and takes her pictures in broad daylight. Ayaka notices the creep taking her pictures and starts posing. Nevertheless, Yuri doesn't like the photos that much but still allows him to leave since he has caught Yuzu in the background in one of the pictures. Finally, it is summer vacation and Aki realizes that it is his first summer in the dormitory. This reveals some things that Aki didn't know before. As in every summer vacation it is Ayaka's duty to help everyone complete their homework. Ayaka informs Aki that they will be starting to work on his homework tomorrow. The next day, it is his turn to do the homework and he makes sure to decorate his room for when Ayaka arrives. Surprisingly, Ayaka arrives wearing a teacher's costume and asks Aki to call her sensei. 
Becky tries to buy some time by giving her tea and other snacks but she delves right into teacher mode. Finally, Aki starts to pay some attention to his studies until Ayaka removes her top. After studying for a while, Aki needs to use the toilet and asks for a little break but she refuses and forces him to complete his homework first. Finally, he finishes the homework and run to use the bathroom. Afterward, he receives an ice cream as a reward for finishing his work. However, instead of eating the ice cream, he focuses on how Ayaka eats and gets lost in his imagination. Later that day, Yatsuho pays them a visit and brings a crate of juice. She lets Ayaka know that there is a present for her as well and walks away. After taking the crate back inside, Ayaka informs Aki about her little sister. He imagines her to be a younger and cuter version of Ayaka until she adds that the little sister is somewhat of a fighter. Later, Ayaka allows Yuki to open the juice but she accidentally ends up opening the drink Yatsuho bought for Ayaka. She ends up taking the drink while Aki opens and drinks the juice. Simultaneously, Yuzu and the other girls arrive and ask Aki if he would let Ayaka drink. After realizing the situation they are in, Yuzu tries to get away but Ayaka manages to catch her. Meanwhile, Sumire and Yuri guard Aki and try to protect him from Ayaka but they end up becoming a target as well. Aki is the only one left but unfortunately, she falls asleep at his turn, ruining all the expectations he had. Aki goes to his room and finds an unknown girl who is changing clothes. Later, Nana informs him that she used to live in his room before he moved in. As the room has no AC, she tells Aki to remove his clothes but his excitement shatters when he realizes that it was just a joke. Afterward, Aki introduces himself and Nana begins to take off his pants in order to verify that he's a boy. Luckily, Yuzu arrives at the perfect time and saves him. After noticing Nana in his room, Yuzu tries to scram but gets caught by her as well. Apparently, Nana was to show them something and asked the two of them to leave the room while she changed clothes. Yuzu tells Aki that Nana is the previous student council president. Later, Nana shows them her high school uniform. She starts messing with Aki but Yuzu saves him once again and tells Nana that she is the top dog of the dormitory and won't allow her to flirt with Aki anymore. This calls for an academic battle and the two of them start going at each other. After an intense battle, Nana ends up winning the battle and claims the right to Aki. Soon after, Ayaka visits their room and Aki finds out that Nana is Ayaka's little sister. The next day, Aki was sleeping in his bed when he noticed a weird presence beside him. He opens his eyes and sees Nana sleeping next to him. Nana wakes up soon after and apologizes as she mistakenly came back to her old room. However, the thing she is worried about the most is that Aki saw her without makeup. Later, she shows Aki a spot in the ceiling where she hides video games and tells Aki that it is perfect for him to hide magazines as well. Nana connects the console to the TV and invites Aki to play with her even though the country boy has never touched a game before. She makes him sit between her legs and teaches him how to play the game. Aki's first try is horrible and ends up losing miserably, but Nana helps him out the second time and he finally wins the game. Nana gets excited and hugs him from behind but it ends up making him a little too excited, resulting in him passing out. After a while, Aki finds himself lying in Nana's lap and the two continue to play another game as no one else is interested in playing them with her. This time it is a fighting one and the wannabe man keeps on getting demolished by her. Suddenly, Ayaka arrives in the room and her video game secret is caught. Nana asks Ayaka to take Aki home with her but she refuses as it is Ayaka's job to look after him. The next day, Aki wakes up from a wet dream and finds Nana sleeping beside him once more. Today, all of them are supposed to visit the water park and Nana decides to join them as well. At the water park, Aki waits outside the dressing room and soon after Ayaka arrives. Out of nowhere, two girls arrive and start hitting on the loser boy. Luckily, Nana appears to save him but she realizes that both the girls are her high school friends. Afterward, the girls introduce themselves as Mako and me and tell him that they both are into young boys. They both think that Nana has scored a middle schooler but she clears up the misunderstanding and tells them that he is more like her personal pet. At the same time, Ayaka arrives as well and meets the school friends for the first time. Nana tells Ayaka to let her have a key for some time as she has already bragged about him in front of her friends. Unluckily, Ayaka refuses which gives Nana the idea to have a swimming race with Ayaka and whoever wins gets to have a key for the day. She agrees and the competition begins while Aki still can't get over the fact that he is chosen as the prize. Later, me, Mako and Aki are the judges and take their seats in front of the swimming pool. However, instead of paying attention to their actual job, both of them start flirting with the little boy sitting in the middle. Meanwhile, both sisters are ready to race each other. Nana believes that she might have an advantage as Ayaka's talents might get in her way. The race finally begins and Ayaka converts her disadvantage to an advantage by keeping the talents out of the water and swimming in a backstroke position. Mako doesn't quite understand if this strategy works and Mi tells her not to worry about it as she will never be able to use it anyway. This discussion takes a weird turn and they start asking Aki if he likes them big or small. 
The race is finally over and Nana asks the judges about who won the race. However, both of them are so busy spoiling the middle schooler that they forget to pay attention. Nana who doesn't know if she won the race or not decides to race once more and keeps on racing her sister until the girls walk away and she eventually loses all the stamina while Ayaka is as fit as ever. After the race ends, Ayaka tells Aki that she can finally give him swimming lessons but it is too late at this point and the water park starts to close. Aki and Yuzu are watching a movie in which a girl is trying to get away from a ghost with a chainsaw. The girl gets caught and turns into a smoothie, making Yuzu scream out loud. Aki who is sitting next to her makes fun of Yuzu for getting scared of something so lame. Yuzu tells Aki that if someone makes fun of a ghost, they end up getting cursed by it. Aki starts to deny it when suddenly Nana emerges from behind the sofa, scaring the crap out of them. She tells them that it is better to be careful as this building is very old and it is most likely that ghosts lurk here. Aki starts freaking out, but she tells him that it's only a joke. At night, Aki is lying on his bed when he hears a voice coming from the other side but there is no room there. He panics and goes to Ayaka's room to ask about it. Surprisingly, Yuzu opens the door but Ayaka is right next to her as well. She informs him that the only thing next to his room is a storage room which has not been in use for a long time. Both of them start to get anxious and Aki asks Yuzu the reason she is staying in the caretaker's room. Ayaka explains that she watched a horror movie and is too scared to sleep on her own. This reminds Ayaka that Aki watched it as well and thinks that he is scared to sleep on his own as well. But he leaves and goes back to his room, proving the fact that he is a man. The sounds keep on coming and this time, Aki decides to go and check out the storeroom and debunk the cause of the sound once and for all. He opens the storeroom door and witnesses Nana running on a treadmill. He realized that the machine was responsible for making the sound he was hearing. Nana realizes that the wimpy kid is scared that the voice is of a ghost and starts teasing him. She tells Aki that her sister has always been against spending this much money and asks him to keep it a secret. Little did she know that Ayaka was standing next to her and heard everything she said. She is pissed at Nana for bringing this much stuff and punishes her by providing peppers and mushrooms with every meal she gets. The next day, Nana tells Yuzu and Aki that she will not be able to throw the stuff away and asks them to hold on to it. Suddenly, Nana starts the treadmill and Yuzu who is standing on top of it is forced to run but eventually falls on the ground. Nana gets an idea to hold a competition of stamina between her and Yuzu and whoever wins has to take the equipment in their room. Yuzu instantly agrees and tells her that she will not go down that easily. This time, Sumire, Yuri and Aki are the judges while Nana and Yuzu are the contestants. The first task is to use the abs rolls and both of them begin using it. Aki decides to face the other way as it is hard for him to watch the rising view he is getting from Nana's side. While Nana is an expert, Yuzu can't even use it once. Nana wins the first round and the second round is to balance themselves on a ball. As expected, Yuzu easily balances herself while Yuzu just falls on the ground on her first try. This time, Yuzu decides to turn the tables and chooses a task of her choice. The task is whoever hangs on the pole the longest wins, and Yuzu ends up winning this one due to her light and short body. Later, Ayaka arrives and tells them to keep their voices down as they will disturb the neighbors. Nana informs Ayaka about the competition they are having and she advises keeping the equipment in the storeroom, which makes all of them question the reason behind this competition. Afterward, Ayaka is watering the plants and Aki decides to handle the bucket, but Ayaka takes it from him as the weakling is having trouble holding it. This makes him realize that most of the work Ayaka does is harder than it looks and there should be something he can do to make it easier. Yuri hears Aki talking to himself and tells him that a massage would be an excellent choice to help Ayaka after all the hard work she does. This reminds Yuri of the new technique she recently learned and the two of them head over to Sumire's room. After tying her up, she uses the massage technique which makes Sumire scream. Afterward, Yuri teaches it to Aki as well and the reaction is similar when he tries it on Sumire as well. As he is all prepared, Aki goes to Ayaka and gives her a massage coupon for free. Ayaka hugs him for showing consideration and claims the coupon instantly. Aki starts off with the shoulders but after a while, he takes his hands to other parts, making Ayaka tease him for being a creep. He finally starts using the trick he used on Sumire, but the reaction is not quite the same. Aki tries it a few more times to see if Ayaka reacts but she stops him saying that it is enough to make her feel fresh and motivated. Little did he know that she enjoyed the massage and did her best to hold out the screams during it. A few days later, Aki gets back home and realizes me and Mako are at the dormitory begging Nana to go to the pool and gaze at the young boys. Afterward, Aki runs into them and Nana uses the perfect opportunity and tells both the girls that they will get Aki for 10 seconds for every page of the homework they fill. Aki eventually agrees as well and Mako gets the first 10 seconds. However, slowly the time starts increasing and the intensity of things they are doing to the poor boy increases as well. Later, they all take a break and ask Ayaka to play the king's game with them. She agrees and Aki ends up playing with them as well. 
The first order by the king is for Ayaka and Aki to eat Paki without using their hands. After Aki's turn, Ayaka keeps on getting picked by the king and performs the actions with both me and Mako as well. Finally, it's Nana and Aki's turn and just as they are about to eat Paki, Ayaka leaves to make dinner and the game ends. After the game, Nana mentions that Aki gave Ayaka a massage the other day and requests to receive one as well. Me and Mako ask for one as well and they all lay on their backs in front of him. He uses Yuri's technique on them as well, making all the girls scream. Nana is hanging out in Aki's room and informs him about the fireworks festival taking place next week. However, he keeps on ignoring her and doing his own work until she takes him to bed and starts twisting his arms as a punishment. Later that day, Aki goes shopping with Ayaka and notices the firework festival poster in a shop as well. After they return home, Nana greets them and asks Ayaka to do the things they always do. Ayaka agrees and takes Nana to her room while Aki stands there looking confused and curious at the same time. He decides to find out their secret himself and eavesdrops while standing outside her room. Nana steps out of the room and notices the nosy brat. She informs him that Ayaka is cleaning her ear and after teasing him for a while, she takes Aki to Ayaka and asks her to clean his ears as well. She agrees and the ear cleaning commences. First up is the right ear and Aki can't stop shaking due to how nervous he is. After she is done with the right one, Ayaka starts working on the left ear and after a while, she is done. However, Ayaka notices that Aki is not replying to her and realizes that he has already fallen asleep. Nana comes to check up on them later and takes a picture of the loser sleeping. After waking up, Aki heads out and notices Nana who is showing his picture to all the girls and making fun of him. Fortunately, Yuri comes to save the situation and shows him Nana's and Yuzu's pictures while ear cleaning as well, leaving them no choice but to stop making fun. As the fireworks festival is tonight, Nana gets prepared and wears a yukata. While she is showing it to Aki, Ayaka arrives and advises her to wear specific shorts as the normal ones aren't suitable for a yukata. Nana asks Ayaka about the reason she doesn't wear yukata and Ayaka replies that she has never been able to find one that can go with the size of her talents. Nana informs her that she will be able to find one easily in online stores but soon realizes that her elder sister doesn't know how to use a smartphone. Later, Aki requests Ayaka to wear a yukata and she agrees. On the other hand, Yuzu is getting ready to go to the festival as well and keeps on telling the other girls that the only reason she is asking Aki is because of the kindness in her heart. After some trial and error, Yuzu finally reaches his room and hesitantly opens the door. Just as she is about to invite him, Yuzu notices Aki enjoying his time with both the sisters, which makes her furious. Finally, all of them are at the festival and the sisters decide to hold his hand so he doesn't get lost. However, this makes him look like an alien being escorted by the Secret Service. Yuzu tells Ayaka that they will be going to the other side of the festival. And Aki tries to come along but she flat out rejects him. He finally puts an end to the hand holding and goes to play the shooting game with Nana. She is able to win the prize on her first try whereas even after getting a ton of lessons. The loser boy is unable to win even a single prize. Later, the next game they play is the goldfish hunt and as always, Nana ends up catching a ton of fish while Aki couldn't catch even one. Surprisingly, Nana returns all the fish back to the owner and walks away as she doesn't have a place to put them. Unexpectedly, me and Mako ran into them and started teasing Aki instantly. Afterward, Ayaka takes them to Yatsuho's stall where she is selling a couple of food items. She shows them all the available items on her menu and offers Ayaka a glass of drink but she refuses because of the guardian's duty. Weirdly, she is not the only one holding a key which impressed Yatsuho about the number of guardians the young boy has. They all buy different kinds of food items and try to feed them to Aki all at once. He gets tired of their unmanly treatment and decides to run away from them. He ends up running very far away and even ends up going outside the festival. Nana calls Yuzu and tells her about the situation, asking them to look for him as well. After getting away from everyone, Aki decides to return back when suddenly the fireworks show starts. He looks at the fireworks and starts questioning his decision to run away as he wants to watch the fireworks with everyone. Surprisingly, Ayaka arrives and complains that she is upset by what he did. The loser starts crying and receives a hug from Ayaka. Afterward, Ayaka tells him that they need to head back as everyone else is still looking for him. This time Ayaka held his hands tightly so that he couldn't run away anymore. Suddenly, a lost child announcement is made but Yuzu steals the microphone and tells Aki to come back or there will be punishments. They both decide to head back and later watch the whole fireworks show along with everyone. Finally, the last firework is launched and with that the firework festival comes to an end. After coming back home, Nana and Aki start playing the game once again and this time, Aki starts to improve a little and keeps on trying again and again in order to beat the level. She tells him that they should play the game together again sometime and asks him to get better before the next time they meet each other. The next day, Nana is finally returning back to her home as the summer vacation is coming to an end. 
Before leaving, Nana informs them that she had a blast spending her summer vacation with everyone and will look forward to the next time they meet. Yuzu is on the verge of crying and she walks away but Aki decides to follow her outside. He shouts at her that he will improve his gaming skills before the time they meet again, and she is happy to hear about it. On morning, Ayaka tells Aki that they have to leave which confuses him as he has no idea where they need to go. Apparently, they have to help at the shopping district and Yuzu forgot to tell him about it. Both of them visit Yantsuho's shop to help her with her work. She comes running and lunges onto him, letting him know that she is waiting for him. Afterward, he asks them about the occasion and Yatsuho replies that it is the Octoberfest and there will be many people visiting the shopping district. Later, they all go inside her shop where Aki is impressed after seeing the variety of drinks present in her shop. Ayaka praises Yatsuho for doing a good job maintaining the business since she got the ownership. However, Aki still seems unsure if this is what a good business looks like. It was Atsuho's idea to ask the new students to assist her so they could get familiar with the area, but it was just a way to acquire free labor. Afterward, Aki receives a maid costume from Yatsuho as he is the first boy to assist her. This reminds him of the bag Yuri gave him and he opens it hoping to find a manly dress. However, all he finds is a girl's wig to help him look more like a female. Having no other choice, he ends up wearing the girl's costume and sometime later the festival begins. Slowly customers start coming and Yatsuho informs Aki that Ayaka is a natural customer magnet. Soon after, Aki is tasked to take the first order and the loser couldn't even write one item from the list the customer requested. Thankfully, Ayaka arrives and takes the order in his place and eventually saves him from an embarrassing moment. Afterward, he starts to bring two drink glasses at the same time and gets impressed after seeing Ayaka who can hold four at a time. Aki ends up spilling the drink but luckily the customer is a weirdo. He doesn't make a big deal out of it and tells Aki that he enjoys seeing a little girl spill a drink. Due to this error, Ayaka ends up bringing free food for the customers and Aki starts feeling unmotivated after causing all the trouble. However, Ayaka tells him not to worry about it as everyone is bound to make some mistakes. Afterward, he gives it his all and doesn't make an error the whole day. Eventually, the festival ends and Aki gets praise from Yatsuho for being a great waiter. Ayaka sneaks on him from behind and gives him a hug. Her weird behavior makes Aki realize that she is drunk and the trouble he will soon be in. The next day, it is time for Yuzu and the others to go on a field trip while Aki and Ayaka stay at home. After they both leave, Ayaka asks Aki if he wants to sleep together but he runs away in embarrassment. Soon after, Nana gives them a visit and gets some sweet potatoes as a treat. They both start eating the sweet potato and send a selfie to Yuzu and the others. Yuzu, who wants to get the upper hand starts sending a ton of photos to prove that they are having more fun. Afterward, Nana goes to measure her weight and is startled after seeing how much it increased. At night, Aki is in his bed when he starts hearing weird noises from the garden. He gathers up the courage and goes to check it out, only to find Ayaka trying to operate the treadmill. The next morning, Ayaka comes to wake him up but faints near his bed. He realizes that she has caught a fever and barges into Yuzu's room who is still in the midst of changing. She tells him not to make a big deal out of it as she is just going through a normal cold. Afterward, the girls bring a change of clothes for Ayaka and help her change after throwing the cultured boy out of the room. Later, the girls put Aki in charge of taking care of Ayaka as they have to go to school. Meanwhile, Ayaka is sleeping and has a nightmare where Aki and Yuzu are feeding her forcefully while wearing maid costumes. She wakes up in a panic while Aki arrives in the room and brings some porridge for her. She is concerned about him skipping school and he informs her that Yuzu and the others will take care of it. Afterward, Ayaka asks him to hand feed her and takes full advantage of her condition. The weirdo keeps staring at her noticing how much she is sweating. He tells her to change the clothes but Ayaka requests him to wipe her back. After he is done with her back, Aki wants to wipe off more sweat and asks if he can take care of her front side as well. He hesitated a little but eventually started wiping the sweat. The next morning, she wakes up and finds Aki still sitting next to her and has almost given up on life. Later, she greets everyone and shows her gratitude for taking care of her. However, the other girls still seem suspicious about how the creep must have taken advantage of her sick condition. Ayaka tells Aki that she will do the same if he ever gets sick and gives him a full body wipe from head to toe. Hearing this makes the girls realize the kind of things Aki was doing behind their backs but he luckily changes the topic before they beat the crap out of him. The next day, Yatsuho gives Ayaka two tickets to the nearby aquarium as she gets them for free. Additionally, she brings some drinks and tells Ayaka that right now is the best time to have some drinks. During Halloween time, Aki is walking through the shopping district and runs into Nana and the others. They force him to come along and enjoy the activities they have planned. The first place they visit is a karaoke they previously rented. Aki sits on Nana's lap and the other two girls sit next to him. Mi sings the first song and Nana sings the next one. Afterward, it is Aki's turn but the country bumpkin has never been in a karaoke. 
The girls help him to choose a song and tell him that they will guide him through the process. The wimp begins to get nervous and both the girls start touching his Excalibur, making the loser even more worried. After getting done with karaoke, Aki tries to return home but the girls ask him to hang out some more and take him to a photo booth. On the other hand, Ayaka and Yatsuho are having drinks together. Ayaka praises the relaxing aroma she is getting from the drink and Yatsuho agrees. They keep on drinking and Yatsuho forces Ayaka to drink more and more. Later, she puts a tangerine on Ayaka's talents as a prank. Soon reality hits Yatsuho and she starts complaining about going to work again while Ayaka consoles her. Meanwhile, Aki is busy taking pictures with the girls and after they are done taking group photos, Nana asks Aki to take one with just the two of them. He hesitantly agrees and they both get a great picture but this makes me and Mako want to take pictures with Aki as well. Seeing how tense he is acting, the girls do something that turns it into the best day of his life. They give him a copy of the photo as well but refuse to show it to Nana. He finally returns back home where Yuzu is already waiting for him and tells him that he is almost past the curfew time. Aki notices the absurd costume she is wearing and inquires about it. Yuzu tells him that they had an event with the kids of the neighborhood as a part of their student council work. She asks him about why he is so late but Aki tries to dodge the question and runs away but a picture falls on the ground. Yuzu picks it up and realizes that it is a picture of Aki getting kissed by both me and Mako. She starts freaking out and tells him that this kind of thing is against the rules. Just then Sumire and Yuri arrive as well and ask about it. Luckily, he is saved by the sounds of Ayaka and Yatsuho drinking. They all run to the room and notice that Ayaka is drunk. Yuzu goes and confronts Yatsuho. However, this result in a grave mistake as both the drunken girls force Yuzu to sit with them. Yuri and Sumire try to help the president out but end up getting attacked by them as well. Aki decides to take the role of a traitor and runs away after leaving them behind. The following day, Ayaka asks Aki if he likes penguins and even while he does, Aki tries to act cool and collected, telling her that they are no big deal. Afterward, she invites him to an aquarium date and Aki asks Yuzu if she wants to join them. However, Yuzu, who recently saw a shark movie is terrified of them and is scared to even put a foot in the aquarium. This results in only the two of them visiting the aquarium. Ayaka starts acting like an embarrassing old dad and Aki takes her somewhere else so she can't embarrass him. Afterward, they go to take a look at the penguins and he freaks out in excitement. Later, Ayaka points out a group of penguins and tells Aki that they look like the dormitory residents. One of those penguins starts chasing the other and this makes perfect sense in Aki's mind as Yuzu always chases him around. After enjoying the penguins, Ayaka buys Parfait for the two of them and Aki loses himself watching penguins swim in the aquarium. Afterward, they visit the souvenir shop and buy a couple of small penguin toys for the others. Later, they both return home and Aki brags about it to Yuzu, telling her how cute all the penguins are. Yuzu wishes that all the aquatic life is similar to penguins, and this reminds Aki to tell Yuzu about the huge shark he saw. She freaks out after hearing about it and tells Aki to shut up. Subsequently, Sumire shows him a photo of Yuzu from when she was in elementary school. He notices that there hasn't been much of a size difference since then. Yuri points out the fact that Sumire looks like Aki's elder sister and she likes the idea of it, asking Aki to call him Big Sister. Suddenly, Yuzu arrives and after hearing about the older sister stuff, she announces herself as the best older sister material. To prove it, she sits on the ground and asks Aki to lie on her lap. He hesitantly agrees and lays on her, but his breathing starts to tickle her legs. She holds it in for a while but the embarrassment catches up to her and she gives up. Seeing them makes Sumire jealous and she asks to be her younger sister as well, prompting her to pick her up. Yuri can't handle these creeps and plans to show them the real older sister act. Afterward, she takes Aki to her bedroom and acts as if he is sick. Yuri starts cutting apples and hand-feeding him but at one point she gives up as well. It is Sumire's turn and she tells Aki to step into the bathroom and asks to take a bath together. Yuzu tells her that it's not normal for siblings this old to take a bath together. As the three girls are only children, the only one they can ask about this kind of information is Aki. However, he doesn't respond normally and they realize that he always starts acting like a weirdo whenever they mention his older sister. Simultaneously, a girl with an umbrella moves towards the dormitory and finally arrives. Aki wakes up and finds a girl on top of him, and he instantly realizes that the girl is none other than his older sister. Suddenly, Ayaka opens the door and notices Aki in the midst of something questionable. Later, she introduces herself as Matsuri and Ayaka apologizes for running their moment together. Afterward, Yuzu asks Aki about the girly clothes he is wearing and Matsuri replies that she likes it when he wears cute clothes. Meanwhile, Yuri and Sumire like her choice but Yuzu thinks that Aki looks better when dressed as a boy. This makes Matsuri offer Yuzu to become her little sister as well, as that way, she will pamper Yuzu for the rest of her life. After the greeting, Matsuri heads out and refuses Ayaka's offer to stay longer. 
However, she asks Aki to come along and informs them that it was her plan to take Aki back home from the beginning. She tells him that it is essential for him to head home as his life will be hard without his older sister. Aki denies her claims and tells her that Ayaka takes good care of him and he is happily living in the dormitory. Matsuri shows her gratitude for taking care of Aki but informs Ayaka that she will be taking her brother home no matter what. Ayaka hugs her and tells her that it is not right to ignore Aki's wishes and do whatever she pleases. The hug makes Matsuri feel a weird warmth and realizes that her cultured brother must have been enjoying his life at the dormitory. Afterward, Ayaka tells her that Aki has been satisfied with the care she provides. However, Matsuri still refuses to listen and plans to test the caretaker herself, with Aki's future at stake. Ayaka likes the idea of getting tested and wears her school uniform to get the full experience. On the other hand, Matsuri is confident that the caretaker can't be that good and will end up failing no matter what. Suddenly, her stomach starts to roar and Ayaka offers to cook them some food. Matsuri realizes that the dish in front of her is from her hometown and later takes a bite of it. Even though she tries to resist, Matsuri can't stop herself and ends up finishing the whole plate. Afterward, Ayaka gives her the desert and this time even her expressions change and give it away that she is enjoying herself. Later, Ayaka receives all kinds of treatments including hand washing, cradling, and ear cleaning. After spending the whole day, Matsuri concludes that Ayaka still has a lot to learn and stops the test for the time being. As it is bedtime, she takes Matsuri to the washroom and brushes her teeth and it gets harder and harder for her to resist her caretaking powers. She goes with the flow and lies beside Ayaka to get a good night's sleep. However, she suddenly snaps out of it and realizes that she can't lose this easily. Ayaka thinks that she can't sleep because Matsuri still hasn't taken a bath. Later, she goes to the washroom and Ayaka decides to join her. She tells Matsuri that it is a special tradition to wash the back of the new arrivals. While washing her back, Ayaka gives her the idea of becoming their older sister but Matsuri refuses her offer. She further tells her that there is no need to worry about Aki as he is in safe hands as long as he stays in the dormitory. Matsuri starts to notice that she will end up getting used to her caretaking if she stays any longer with her. After the bath, she finally accepts her skills and tells her to stay on this level or she will take Aki back with her. The next day, Aki and Ayaka go out shopping and Matsuri decides to stalk them and catch them lacking. They head straight to the shopping district and Ayaka gets a little too close to Aki. Matsuri uses this as an excuse and confronts them for being romantic. However, Ayaka explains that she was feeding Aki a meat bun as his hands were occupied. Later, while Ayaka is busy telling them about the shopping district, Matsuri uses this opportunity and escapes along with Aki. She takes him to a dark alley and tells him that they need to return back home. Aki straight up refuses but shuts his mouth after seeing the scary look Matsuri has on her face. Afterward, she plans to get out into the open as from there she can figure out the rest of the way. After walking for a while, they realize that there is no open area and they are lost. Suddenly, Matsuri trips and falls on the stairs, resulting in hurting her legs. Aki offers to give her a piggyback ride back to the dormitory as she can't walk on her own. She accepts the offer but feels bad for making Aki carry her back. However, Aki replies that it is all good as he is a boy and it is his duty. Hearing him say this reminds Matsuri of their childhood when she gave a piggyback to him the same way he is giving her right now, making her realize that he has grown up and maybe doesn't need her help anymore. After reaching the dormitory, Ayaka praises him for taking care of his sister and later at night, Matsuri leaves. The next day, Aki is getting late for school and just as he is about to head out, he notices Matsuri standing on the doorstep. She informs them about getting admission to a nearby high school and warns Ayaka that she will never be getting her little brother. The next day, Aki and Ayaka set up a kotatsu in the living room as the winter season is arriving. Ayaka notices that the blanket in it is very clean and fluffy which makes Aki want to get in instantly. She tells them to give it a try and both of them start to enjoy the warmth of the kotatsu. To make the experience even better, Ayaka brings out a bucket of tangerine to enjoy while sitting in the kotatsu. They both start to enjoy them and Ayaka starts hand-feeding them to Aki. After a while, he realizes that the kotatsu stopped working and Ayaka reveals that it must be because of how old it is. She goes inside to have a look at the problem and finds out that it is unplugged. While she is inside, Ayaka starts tickling his feet and after enduring it for a while, the failure gives up and catches Ayaka messing with him. This time, they both sit next to each other and wait for it to heat up again. Soon, she leaves to make some tea for the two of them and the comfort ends up making Aki fall asleep. She sits in front of him and watches him sleep. He wakes up soon after and apologizes for falling asleep. Soon it is Christmas, Yuzu and Aki are walking in the shopping district. She asks Aki if Ayaka asked him about the present he wants. Aki replies that his sister always communicates with Santa and tells him the things he wants. Suddenly, it makes him wonder who will be responsible for communicating this year. However, he is confident that Santa is aware of his new home. 
This conversation makes Yuzu realize that the idiot still believes in Santa but decides to go with the flow. Later at home, she tells Sumair and Yuri that it was very hard for her to accept the fact that Santa doesn't exist and doesn't want Aki to go through the same pain. She asks them to let Aki live in the dreamland but there is another problem they need to solve. Aki has decided to stay up all night and wait for Santa to arrive which can be a big problem. However, their ideas include giving him sleeping pills or chopping his neck. Later, all the girls visit the dormitory to celebrate Christmas Eve. Nana shows him her Santa cosplay while Mi and Mariko try to force him into wearing one as well but he refuses. Afterward, Ayaka arrives wearing a Santa cosplay as well and brings food along with her. Yuzu still seems worried about Aki but Yuri shows her the sleeping pill she brought while Sumire reassures her with the neck chopping method. Later, Ayaka brings out the Christmas cake she made and Nana asks for the cake slice with Santa. They all end up playing rock paper scissors for it as everyone seems to want it for themselves. Subsequently, Yatsuho brings the carton of drinks and Ayaka apologizes for making her work on Christmas as well. She later invites her to come in and enjoy herself with everyone else and she agrees. Later, Yatsuho along with Aki and the girls are sitting in the kotatsu. She invites the girls to come and help out at her shop but they refuse. She also asks Aki if he wants to help but he also refuses the offer. On the other hand, the other girls are sitting at the table and Yuri tells Nana to move in again but she refuses as the school she studies in is very far away from the dormitory. However, Nana agrees to stay the night and teases Yuzu by telling her that she will sleep next to Aki. Meanwhile, Aki gets bored and starts walking towards his room but Nana stops him and asks if he wants to sneak out and hang out somewhere. However, he refuses and tells her that Santa doesn't bring presents for bad boys. Nana is about to break his hopes and dreams but luckily, Yuzu arrives and stops her at the right time. Matsuri also decides to give Aki a visit and arrives wearing a Santa costume. However, she wants to keep it a secret and waits outside the house for the perfect opportunity. Yuzu tells Nana that he still believes in Santa and she gives Yuzu the idea to stay with Aki the whole night and make sure he gets a good night's sleep. After they are done eating, Atsuho, me, and Mariko head back home while Nana decides to sleep with Ayaka tonight. Ayaka notices Matsuri outside their house trying to get inside. On the other hand, Yuzu goes to Aki's room and he thinks that she is excited to meet Santa as well and wants to wait with him. Nevertheless, she puts him in bed and forces him to fall asleep. In order to make him sleep faster, she lies next to him and pats his stomach. Meanwhile, Ayaka invites Matsuri inside and asks her the reason she was waiting out in the cold instead of walking through the front door like a normal human being. She replies that her plan was to give Aki a surprise while wearing a Santa costume and the plan would have been meaningless if they were not alone. Ayaka gave her hot milk and apologized for not noticing her presence outside the dormitory. Soon, Aki starts falling asleep while Yuzu lies next to him. Matsuri gets jealous of Yuzu who is sleeping next to Aki and Sumire consoles her saying that she feels the same way but for Yuzu. Afterward, Ayaka and Matsuri step inside the room to give them presents while the other girls wait outside. Nana arrives but the girls tell her to keep quiet as they both are sleeping. After putting the presents, Ayaka is about to leave when Aki wakes up for a second and thinks that Santa looks similar to his caretaker. At night, he dreams about soaring into the skies with Ayaka who is apparently the Santa in his dreams. The next morning, Aki tells Ayaka that he saw Santa and he looks very similar to the caretaker. Aki still can't figure out the reason he received two presents instead of one and Ayaka informs him that it is the result of him behaving like a good boy all throughout the year. Later, everyone cleans the dormitory together and finishes up cleaning the top floor. Yuzu's hands start getting numb from the cold weather and she decides to warm them up by touching Aki's body. Sumire and Yuri join them too and successfully steal all his body heat. Afterward, they plan to clean Aki's room but he tries to stop them from doing so. Yuzu figures out that it must be because he is hiding magazines somewhere. Sumayar takes it into her own hands and starts searching for the magazines under the bed but all she finds is a book with muscular men on it. They start getting suspicious and think that Aki might be into men. It is New Year's Eve. Ayaka thanks them for cleaning the house and she makes soba for everyone to enjoy. During dinner, Yuzu mentions that Matsuri transferred to the same school where Nana studies. This makes Yuzu excited as she looks forward to going to the same school. Afterward, Ayaka informs everyone that Nana can't visit them today because she will be hanging out with her friends and visiting a shrine for New Year's. She tells Aki to look forward to the gift he will be receiving for the New Year. After finishing up food, Yuzu and the others start feeling sleepy and head towards their room after wishing each other a happy New Year. Meanwhile, Aki remains awake and Ayaka tells him that she will let it slide this time as it's New Year's Eve. Afterward, she mentions that time flew by as soon as Aki came to live with them. She then asks Aki if he is satisfied with the treatment he receives from her. He agrees and tells her that he is glad to have her as a caretaker. It's almost 12 o'clock and he starts getting sleepy but tries to stay awake as he doesn't want Ayaka to spend the new year by herself. 
Finally the clock strikes and they wish each other a happy new year. This was all about our little cultured loner. How will he spend the next year in the dormitory and will he be able to showcase some manly qualities? Comment dormitory below and let us know. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more plot filled recaps.